this is the third part of the series how to stop sinning i have entitled this one the other side of character perfection how to stop sinning how to stop sin of presumption and omission because the first and second part we deal with the sin of commission now part of the third series is how to stop the sin of presumption and omission this is a very important because with all our mere human efforts and strength it is impossible to stop sinning but with god's grace and his empowerment of the holy spirit everything is possible when biblical writer declares that Christian must avoid sin, flee from sin, cease to sin, God communicated to them that he is asking the thing that his people are able to do. It is the devil's gospels of deception that we cannot stop sinning. Anyone who follows his gospel is already deceived and his agents and allies in deception. To many Christians, this is impossible, but Jesus assures everyone, for nothing will be impossible with God. Luke 1 37. But with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Matthew 19 26. So let's look at the other side of character perfection. The keeping of God's law throughout, through His grace, by faith, is character perfection. So the perfection of Christian character has decided. The scripture asserts that we can stop sinning as shown in many parts of the Bible. The word of God also reveals in many places of scripture how to stop sinning. The sins under the side of perfection of character mostly deal with sins of commission. On the other side of Christian perfection of character deals with the sins of presumption and omission. This is an integral part of how to stop sinning. The sin of presumption and omission. These sins are not widely discussed in religious circles, but it has the same consequences with the sin of omission. They are placed side by side, the sin of presumption and the sin of omission. The sin of presumption also uh, put it in James side by side. He says, now come. You say, today or tomorrow, we will go to such and such city and spend a year there, buy and sell and make profit, whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? It is even a before that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, he, we shall live and do this or that. But now you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. James 4 Verses 13 to 16. This is a sin, this is a clear sin of presumption in which many professed Christians have committed. The sin of omission is, is this. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. James 4 17. In the same manner, the sin is also in general committed by people who claims to serve God. Sin of presumption and omission. Presumption is an idea that is taken to be true on the basis of probability. It is an act of believing that something is true. Having any fruit without having any fruit, in other words, self-assurance. It is something as taken being true or factual and used as a starting point for a course of action or reasoning as self-confidence, self-sufficiency, and arrogance. It is a defiant to the Word of God. We deal sin of presumption briefly for before the sin of omission. The sin of omission and sin of commission are both referred to in the Word of God. A sin of commission involves willful act of doing something that violates God's commands. In the scripture, such as lying, stealing, murder, adultery, and other sins that are actively done among others. Sin of omission involves not doing what is right or failing to do as instructed. 
It is a sin that is the result of not doing something that God's Word teaches that we should do and must do. Sins of omissions are acts of disobedience against God, just as serious as those committed by sin of commission or transgression. God said to prophet Ezekiel, Son of man, lift up your eyes now towards the north. And he saw an image of jealousy inside the temple of the Lord. And again, God said, Go inside and see the wicked abominations which they are doing there. And he saw, and there, every sort of creeping thing, abominable beast, and all idols of the house of Israel portrayed all around on the walls. And there stood before them seventy men, the elders of the house of Israel. Each man had a censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up, and God said, Son of man, have you seen what the elders of the house of Israel doing in the dark? Every man in the room of his idols? For they say, the Lord does not see us. The Lord has forsaken the land. So he brought me to the door of the north gate of the Lord's house. And to my dismay, women were there weeping for Tammuz. Once more, Ezekiel saw 25 men with their back towards the temple of the Lord, facing their faces towards the east, and they're worshiping the sun towards the east. Ezekiel chapter 8, verses 5 up to 16. What is this? Doing things inside the temple of the Lord, that is abomination. Supposed to be the temple, the, the temple of the Lord was for worship and praise and glorified his name. But look what happened to this abomination by the 70 elders, by the women, by the elders. They are worshiping the sun. They worship Tammuz and other gods. They have all the wicked abomination, the image of jealousy. Why they have done that? Because they think that God did not see them. And that is the sin of something that is terrible. So, what Ezekiel witnessed inside the temple of God were wickedness and abomination. They are fooling and deceiving themselves that God cannot see their religious activities, which are all abomination to the Lord, done in the very temple where God is worshipped. These people were deceived, blinded, Palace servants of the devil and yet still in the temple of God thinking that God is with them and God in them. This utter presumption of highest degree against God. In fact, found in Malachi. In Malachi says, chapter 2, verse 17, Everyone who does evil is good in the sight of the Lord. He delights in them. This is the complaint of God in the book of Malachi because they do a lot of foolishness, wickedness. And yet, they said, God, everyone who does evil is good in the sight of the Lord. He delights in them. This is religious pretenders. This is sin of presumption. King Saul committed sin of presumption. He kept in obeying God's command, but partially. One time he confessed his sin. He said, I have sinned, yet honor me now, please, before the elders of my people, before Israel, and return to me that I may worship the Lord. So Samuel turned back after Saul, and Saul worshiped the Lord. 1 Samuel 15, 30. How could he honor when he sinned before God? The prophet Samuel and the people. This is arrogant, defiant before God. And so, judgment of the religious surmiser. People of religious presumptions, the penalty was death in biblical times. But if a man acts with premeditation against his neighbor to kill him by treachery, you shall take him from my altar that he may die. Exodus 21.14 Now the man who acts presumptuously will not heed the priest who stand to minister before the Lord of God or judge. That man shall die. So, so shall put away evil from Israel. Deuteronomy 17, 12. But the prophet who presumed to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or speak in the name of other God, that prophet shall die. Deuteronomy 18, 20. And so the sin of presumption is so dangerous. So the psalmist prayed, 
keep back your servant also from sin of presumptuous. Let them have not dominion over me, then I shall be blameless and I shall be innocent in the great transgression. Psalms 19.13 So meaning to say, distorted, blurred, dark, mental picture of God. Woe to those who seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord and their works are in the dark. They say, who sees us? Who knows us? Isaiah 29.15 they underestimate God's wisdom, power, and authority and toy his judgment as if God is a mere man. In God's judgment, he tells them their work, their transgression, that they have acted defiantly. Job 36.9 This is what the post-flood people defiantly did when God said, Be fruitful and fill the earth. Genesis 9, 1, 7. Instead of spreading into the earth, they colonized in the plain of Sinar. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city, a tower who stop in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we'll be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. Genesis eleven four. The result, God destroyed their tower and confused their language. Reason, because this is a sin of presumption. They thought that God did not act of what they have been doing. Look at the sin of presumption in New Testament. Jesus said to his disciples, Time is coming that whoever kills you will think he offers God a service. Think of that. Killing people and attributing that as a God's service. That is God's, that is a very an offensive sin before God because that is the sin of presumption. Look at here. It is practiced by people who wants to kill Paul according to Acts 23, 13 to 15. Now there were more than 40 who had formed conspiracy. They came to the chief priest and elder and said, we bound ourselves under a great oath that we will not eat nothing until we have killed Paul. Just imagine that. Pasting because they want to kill. Now, therefore, go together with the council. Suggest the commander that he be brought down tomorrow as though you are going to make further inquiries concerning him, but you are ready to kill him before he comes near. Sin of presumption is common among God's people who profess to be God's people both in the Old and New Testament. This common sense of presumption is until today. That is what James is saying. We say, oh, we'll go there, we'll go there. No, no, we do not know. Right? That is boasting. So, it means to say, we need to be careful, especially those who walk according to the flesh in the lust of uncleanliness and despise authority. They are presumptuous, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil dignitaries. So that is in the time of the New Testament, Second Peter 2.10. Before it's too late, listen to the warning. Behold, I'm against you, O most haughty one, says the Lord of God. For your day has come, the time I will punish you. The most proud shall humble and fall, and no one will raise him up. I will kindle a fire in his cities, and I will devour all around him. Jeremiah 50, 31, 32. King Belshazzar did not learn the warning. But when his heart was lifted up, his spirit was hardened and pride. He was deposed from his kingly throne and took him, took his glory from him, Daniel 5.20. The last, God's last appeal to those who serve God with presumption. Oh, how you despise the riches of God's goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing the goodness of God leads you to repentance. When God is so good with us, and we're doing not his will, we're violating his laws, we need to remember that it will lead us into repentance, but presumption, God is with me. By God's grace through faith, everyone who falls into this trap of sin can stop the sin of presumption. So the question associated with the sin of omission, let's go now to the sin of omission. Sin of omission are illustrated in many different forms and practices as recorded in the Bible. However, they are easily overlooked, taken for granted, even if they are in front of us. Sin of omission is a failure to use our common sins. We see and feel it in our daily experiences as 
life as we see people around us. But there are sin of omission that Jesus heavily dealt with. So deadly serious because it ends in the final judgment and the result is eternal condemnation and people seem not so aware that it matters to God. Therefore, personal serious questions are attached to the sin of omission should be considered. A Christian should ask what are the possible sin of omission that he or she could do otherwise. What are the possible ways by which we can avoid the personal traps and deception of the sin of omission? The concept of these two kinds of sin are just exposed by Paul in Romans 7, 14 to 20. He deplores the tendency towards both types of sin. He does and what he does not want to do and knows what is wrong. This is sin of commission. And he does not do what he knows what he should do, really wants to do. This is the sin of omission. So sin of omission deny believers the blessing of obedience and leave a portion to spiritual potential in which they are capable of doing. Like refusing to share your faith in Christ with others, neglecting to care for those in need, which you are able are examples of sin of omission. Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind and your awe and your neighbor as yourself. Luke 10, 27. When this divine law is lived and practiced by believer, sins of omissions are deadered. Let's look at some examples of sin of omission. Christians are given a mandate to speak the truth. Ephesians 4. Credit God. Proclaim their faith. Even when it proves costly, if this omitted surely result is sin of omission. Jesus said in Matthew's Gospel, Whoever denies me before men, well also I deny him before the Father who is in heaven. Matthew 10, 33. Jesus also told his listener, But why do you call me Lord? Lord, and do not know the things which I say. Whoever comes to me, hears my saying, and that's them, I will show to them he is like, he is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid foundation on the rock, and when the flood arose, the stream, the steam, the stream beat vehemently against the house and could not shake it, for it was founded on a rock. But he who heard and did not did nothing like a man built a house on earth without foundation, again which the stream beat vehemently and immediately it fell, and ruins on the house the, the, of that house was great. Luke 6, 46, 49. This is clear sin of omission. The judgment of the sin of omission is for future of eternal life. But the scripture also speaks of sin of presumption, which was considered as serious and deadly. The sin between commission and omission. We need to understand the kind of sin because the sin of many people have committed advertently or inadvertently. What is the sin of presumption? How it is committed? Why it is deadly? Was there any record in scripture? Some think it is okay, but actually it's not. So many have committed the sins of presumption. Presumption, as I said, that is a, a probability. Okay? is making us something that you presume something. And we find a lot of that in the Old Testament. Okay? Uh, for example, here is the example here. Okay? God said, do not go and make war with that group of people. And they went. So look at here. Then you answer and said to me, we have sinned against the Lord. We will go up and fight just as the Lord our God commanded us. And when every one of you had girded the weapons of war, you were ready to go up into the mountain. The Lord said to me, tell them, do not go up and fight for I am not among you, lest you be defeated before your enemy. So I speak to you, let, uh, let you would not listen but rebuild against the command of the Lord. Presumptuously went up into the mountain. Oh, see, because they believe that God says, okay, we have failed, let's go because God tell us, God is with us, but God is not telling them to go in war. They do it voluntarily. So be alert and urgent to rescue if one is able. Deliver those who are drawn towards death. Hold back those stumbling to slaughter if you say, surely we did not do this. Does not he weighs hearts and consider it? He who keeps the soul, 
Does he not know it? And he will not render each man according to his deeds. Proverbs 24, 11. So classic offender of sin of omission is the Pharisee. What do your scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and neglected the withers matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faith? You ought to have done without leaving the others undone. Blind guide who strained out the gnat and swallow came up. Matthew 23, 23, 24. By this we know love because he laid down his life for us. And we also ought to lay down our lives to the brethren. But whoever has this world goods and see his brother in need and shut up his heart from him, now does his love God abide in him? This is really, this is practical godliness. Okay? It is a challenge to all of us who have short way of practical godliness. This is what God said in Isaiah. Is not the fast that I have chosen to lose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go, free and break every yoke? Is not the share to your bread with the hungry that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out when you sit naked and you cover him and not hide yourself from your own flesh? Then your light shall break forth like in the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer and you shall cry and he will say, I am he. We need to understand this one of sin of omission. That's why Jesus says, through fasting is to help those people outside, within our reach that we can help. So there are eight things in this text above that we could help choose which one within our reach and capacity or recommend it to others to have a means that you may receive their blessing. Bring the poor into the house, See the naked, cover him. Feed the hungry. Help the oppressed. Share your bread. Those who are slave of wickedness, help. That is a practical godliness that many of us have failed. David have such kinds of experience that sin of commission. Remember that sin of mission leads to his sin of commission. Jesus told his disciples, if you love me, keep my commandments. But not following or obeying instruction of the Lord, one commits sin of omission. This is love that we walk according to his commandments. Failure to walk as indication of love is a sin of omission. It really has been in court. In the Old Testament, there was a time when King David remained in Jerusalem. While his general went off to war, this was a clear neglect or omission of David's cleanly duty. Not now by being with his men in the time of crisis, David was not where he was supposed to be. He was guilty of sin of omission. And because of them, he exposed himself to temptation which come in the form of lust. His lust for a married woman, Bathsheba, eventually led to adultery and later murder, multiple sins of omission. This is a serious thing. So we need to be faithful because faithfulness versus failure and failing. Jesus, in his four-part series of end-time parables, how he prepared enough for his second coming, shows he was pointing to the sin of omission is a serious offense against heaven. He did illustrate the sin of omission by contrasting the faithfulness and failure or failing to be faithful. The parable of the faithful and wise servant. Portray minister leader of God's household contrasted by evil servant. Matthew 24, 45 to 51. Who served together in the master household while he was away. The evil servant failed to execute the words of the master and failed to discern the time of his coming. And he did, follow, he did not follow the master's agenda, but his own agenda become, he became a hypocrite. It was too late for him to recover, reform, and amend life. He ends in weeping and gnashing of teeth of irreversible judgment of the condemnation due to his sin of omission. The wise, 
virgins versus the foolish. Everything the same with the two groups of virgins who were invited in the wedding except the foolish virgins had failed to prepare extra oil in case of emergency. Again, it was too late for the foolish virgin to remedy, to rim the seemingly insignificant omission or failure during preparation, but the time is up. That's supposed to be within the time frame of waiting, they could have done it. They knew that the wedding was at night and it was difficult to secure extra oil in such time in a case of crisis. The consequence, not only the door was shut, but they were denied and rejected by a faithful declaration, I do not know you, Matthew 25, 12. So, each servants, the faithful and the good and the wicked and the lazy. Again, this one, the one will have two talents, three talents. At the time of reckoning, the two talents commended as faithful and good and rewarded and given more responsibility and enjoyed the Lord. One talent had lost all reason to justify. What he did to the Lord's talent was to be traded and he received the verdict, wicked and lazy. Matthew 25, 26. And bereaved him of everything. He was cast into the darkness, weeping and gnashing of teeth. The time was too acute to undo the damage of sin of omission. He had time to trade. It is because his Lord was delayed for a long time. Matthew 25, 19. But it was too late. So we need to be careful with all these sins because offender of sins of omission is condemned in judgment. Well, study carefully. What sin of omission is specifically condemned by offenders before God in the judgment? In Matthew 25, gives the clearest omitted sin. The sin separates into two classes of people who are serving God either to eternal life or eternal damnation. Matthew 25, 32. The fact that both goats on the left and the sheep on the right were surprised why such sin of mission in judgment become the basis of the burden. The righteous said, when did we see you? Matthew 25, 37. So with the wicked, Lord, when did we see you? They were surprised. Matthew 24, 44. Jesus did not answer the exact time when, but in every time they see people who were hungry, thirsty, a stranger, naked, sick, and in prison, Matthew 25, 37, 30, 39, for these are Christ's less brethren. Matthew 25, 40, they neglected and ignore the least brothers and sisters of the Lord. Remember that they were surprised, but the righteous, because the righteous did it unknowingly but the wicked did it also because it is within the rich to help these people so careless ways of life someone asked have we ever looked at human lives and felt our hearts break not because of sin committed but because of potential left unattended king solomon says he who keeps the commandments keep his soul, but he who is careless in his ways will die. My brothers and sisters, I'm, what I'm talking about is that we need to look at those people that are really in need. Listen to this warning. The warning is so solemn that in that great judgment day, those who have not worked for Christ, who have drifted along thinking of themselves, Caring of themselves will be placed by the judge of the whole earth with those who did evil. These people who committed the sin of omission, they have nothing wrong. They, have not, they are not transgressor of God's law. But they forget those people that in need that they just simply ignore. And so, Illinois White says, they will be placed by the judge of the earth with those who did evil, they received the same condemnation. Desire of Ages 6.40. So selfishness and self-centered life is a curse. He who gives to the poor will never want, but he who shuts his eyes will have many curses. Proverbs 28.27. As a believer in God, the righteous is so concerned for the rights of the poor. The wicked does not understand such concern. 
Pro Proverbs 29, 7. So, they just cared for them unconsciously. In the throne of judgment, Jesus pointed out that the righteous did not know that the needy people were Christ's less brothers and sisters. So, they served them. For serving the Lord is also serving others who are in need with material things needed for survival for life. It is an act of love and mercy and compassion. So the king said, He will say to those in his right hand, Come, blessed my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, you gave me food. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger, you took me in. I was naked, you clothed me. I was sick, you visited me. I was in prison, you come to me. Matthew 25, 34, 37. Resolve eternal life. Can you afford sitting in the church? So comfortable in your home, yet before you reach the church, you see some of them ignored because you might be late in worship. How many people have done these things yet remain unconcerned? Of course, emergency is another story. So they are denied, ignored, disregarded, and neglected. Then he will also say to those in left hand, Depart from me, ye curse, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. I was hungry, you give me no food. I was thirsty, you give me no drink. I was a stranger, you did not take me in. Naked, you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, you did not visit me. Then they will also answer him, saying, Lord, when did you see you hungry, thirsty, stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison that did minister to you? Then he will answer to them, As surely I say to you, inasmuch as you did not do to one of the less of this, you did not do it to me. This will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Matthew 25, 41. Sometimes it is wise to say no. When we cannot really provide, but when we can offer a prayer that others may help them. So this is really the problem of the great omission. There was no sin committed against these needy people. They were not intentionally starved or deprived of their clothing. But the sin of omission was committed when those who could have provided for them choose not to. This is sin of greediness. It's on the same level of covetousness, which is idolatry. Colossians 3.5 That is why sin of omission, unless confessed, repented, corrected, result in condemnation. So the relevant questions are, how God treats the disadvantaged people? How close the needy people in God's heart? What is the punishment or judgment if these people are not treated well by the miser, instead the malign, ignore, abuse, and mock them? Let us look at some biblical texts that the Word of God says about them, how close they are from God's heart. God is on the side of the down and out people. But you have seen, for you observe trouble and grief to repay it by your hand. The helpless commit himself to you, and you are the helper of the fatherless. Think of that. Psalms 10, 14. I know the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted, the justice, and the poor. Psalms 140, 12. He who mocks the poor reproaches his maker. He who is glad at their calamity will not go unpunished. Proverbs 17, 5. For you had been the strength to the poor, the strength to the needy in his distress, a refuge from storm, a shield from the heat. For the blast of the terrible one is a storm against the wall. Isaiah 25, 4. How close these people who are disadvantaged, who are poor in need, so close with God. And why we are not close to them? The poor and needy seek water, but there is none. Their tongues fail for thirst. I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. Isaiah 41, 17. Then he lifted out his eyes toward his disciples and said, Blessed are you poor, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when you are hungry now, for you shall be filled. Blessed are you who weep for you shall love. Matthew 6, 20, Luke 6, 20 and 21. Listen, my beloved brethren, 
Has not God chosen the poor for this world to be raised in faith and ears of the kingdom, which he promised to those who love him? James 2, 5. In fact, in his inaugural address and his, at the end of his ministry, listen to this. Mark point this will, that Jesus inaugurated his ministry as empowered by the Holy Spirit. He declared, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim the liberty to the captives, the recovery of the sight to the blind, to set liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Luke 16 to 19. Do you know that the heart of his mission on earth is for the disadvantaged and the poor? And look at, at the end of his ministry before going to the cross, where he painted the last images about himself, that he is hungry, thirsty, stranger, naked, sick, and in prison, and he repeated it twice for emphasis in, in, in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 25, verses 35, 36, 42. And 43. So, the Old Testament and the New have the same. God's mandate, both believers and not believers, should be served. So then, while we have the opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially those who are in the household of faith. Galatians 6.10 If there is a poor man with you, one of your brothers, if any of your towns in your land, which is the Lord your God, is giving you, you shall not harden your heart, nor close your hand from your poor brother. You shall freely open your hand to him and shall generously lend sufficient for his need in whatever he lacks. Deuteronomy 15, 7 to 8. Contributing to the needs of the sin, practicing hospitality. My brothers and sisters, we are comfortable with our Nice home and nice food. Others are really dying, crying to God. And then we shook our head. We are not sharing what we have. Evil church member, do practical religion. If a brother or sister without clothing and in need of daily food, one of you says to them, go in peace, warm and be filled. Yet you do not give him what is necessary for their body. What's use of that? This kind of religion is lip service. Whoever has the world goods and sees his brother in need, closes his heart against him, how does he love the Lord God and abide in him? 1 John 3, 17. The destitute, the underprivileged, should not be neglected by a fellow believers, hence they are part of God's family. The sin of omission could be committed by fellow church members who have the capacity to help the down at the hill, but just ignore the lack of necessity, yet he thinks that he served God. This is acceptable and pleasing to God. You shall not pervert justice due to the needy brother, brother in dispute in Exodus 23, 6. How many are victims of injustice? Because justice sometimes is bought by money. Now, in case of a countryman of yours become poor and his means with regards to your falter, then you are to sustain him like a stranger or sojourner. That he may live with you. Do not take usurious interest for him, but revere your God, that your countryman may live with you. You shall not give him, you shall, you shall not give him your silver at interest, nor your food for gain. How many are practicing it today? You shall not oppress a hired servant who is poor and needy. Whether he is one of your countrymen or one of your aliens who is in your land, in your towns, you shall give him his wages on his day before the sun sets, for he is poor and he set his heart on it, so that he will not cry against you to the Lord, and it becomes sin in you. Deuteronomy 15 and 16. So, we need to understand, because of the devastation of the afflicted, because of the groaning of the needy, now I will arise, says the Lord. I will sit him in a city for which he belongs, Psalms 12, 5. For he stands at the right hand of the needy to save those who are judged his soul, Psalm 109, 31. The Lord also will be stronghold for the oppressed, the stronghold in the times of trouble, Psalms 9, verse 9. 
May he vindicate the afflicted of people, save the children of the needy, and crush the oppressor. Psalm 72 verse 4. Vindicate the weak and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and destitute. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them out of the hand of the wicked. Psalms 82, 3 and 4. Let us say in the side of the needy, and we are on the side of God. We are not all to go to the same heaven. Is there any category in heaven? If not, think of judgment. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ass of the heap. He who is gracious to the poor man leads to the Lord and he will repay him for his good deed. Proverbs 19, 17. He who praises the poor to make more himself or give to the rich will only come to poverty. Proverbs 22, 16. That's why there is hope. Do not rob the poor because he is poor or crush the afflicted at the gate. For the Lord will plead their case and take a life to those who rob them. Proverbs 22, 22, 23. The problem is that God delays his judgment. And if God immediately executes justice, we see action as never before faster than that of the lightning. Sin of omission. Look at Daniel. So the governor and satrap sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could not find no charge or fault because he was faithful. Nor was there any error or fault found in him, Daniel 6, 4. So Daniel was balanced in all administrative duties and function. Nothing has been left. If all our missions and conferences, men simply follow Daniel's leadership, God's name is praised and many will want to God's kingdom. That's why Jesus says, be doers of the word, not hearers only. Deceiving yourself if anyone is hearer of the word and not doer. He's like a man observing natural face in the mirror for he observed himself and goes away and immediately forget what kind of man he was. But he who looks into a perfect law of liberty and continues in it is not forgetful hearer but doer of the word. This one will be blessed in what he does. James 1, 21 and 22. Those whom Christ commends in the judgment may have known little theology, but they have cherished his principle. Through the influence of the divine spirit, they had been a blessing to those about them. Even among the heathen are those who cherish the spirit of kindness. Before the words of life had fallen upon their ears, they have befriended missionaries, even ministering at the peril of their own lives. Among the heathen are those who worship God ignorantly, those whom the light is never brought by human instrumentality, yet they will not perish. Through ignorance of the written law of God, they have heard his voice speaking in them in nature and have done things that the law require. Their works are evidence that the Holy Spirit has touched their hearts and they are recognized as children of God. Just imagine, uneducated, barbarous, and yet they listen. They read nature and they help those people and they are counted as God's people even they are hidden. That's a challenge to us. So the call uh, to Christ perfection, character perfection. Jesus called for perfection of Christian character by emulating the perfect character of God. The Lord declares, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and help hit your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be the son of your father in heaven. For he make his son rise on evil and on the good, and he send the rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love only those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even tax collector do the same. And if you greet only brethren, what do you more than others? Do not even tax collectors do so. Therefore, you shall be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Meaning to say, equal treatment with others is perfection of Christian character. Like the perfect character of God that treats evil and good, just and the unjust alike. Let us do practical 
godliness. Let us take care of those who have no means. To him who strike one of the check, offer the other also. From him who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic. Give everyone who asks. And from him who takes away goods, do not ask them back. Just as you want them to do to you, you also do to them likewise. But if you love those who love you, what credit is that? For even sinners love those who love them. But if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that for you? Even sinners do the same. But if you learn from those who hope to receive back, what credit is that to you? For even sinner lends to sinner and receive as much. But Love your enemies, do good, lend to them, hoping nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you will be the sons of the Most High, for He is kind to the unthankful and evil. Therefore, be merciful, just as your Father also is merciful. Luke 6, 27, 36. Let's look at the rich and newly. The rich and newly said, Good teacher, what shall I go? That I may inherit in Leah. Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good, but one, that is God. If you want to enter life, keep my commandments. And he said to him, which one? Jesus said, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear full witness, honor a father, mother, and you shall love your neighbor. Worship. The young man said, all these things I have kept from my youth. What shall I do? And Jesus said, if you want to be perfect, sell all what you have, give to the poor, and you have a treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. When the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he got decision. Guilty of sin of omission and covetousness. Sin of omission due to greediness and covetousness. It is easier for a camel to pass a needle eyes rather than a rich man to go to heaven. Let's look at the good Samaritans. The story of the Good Samaritan in New Testament is a classic example given by Jesus on the account of Good Samaritan. After the man had been beaten, left in need of help, two men passed by, a priest and a Levite, both of whom better. This person they knew better but failed to act. These are religious people failed to do what is the right thing to do. This is blatant religious hypocrisy. Doing the service of God and cannot serve immediate need? The third man, the Samaritan, stopped to show compassion to the man in need. Jesus used this example to teach that we are likewise help those in need. By doing so, he clearly communicated that it is sinful to avoid doing good. Just it is sinful to pursue what is evil. Three men had the opportunity to do what is right. But only one of them did it. Jesus' conclusion is clear. We should imitate the compassionate Samaritan, not the priest or Levite who simply look away. That is a sin of omission. It is the duty of the church, in general, in particular, is liable of sin of omission. The Savior had given this precious life in order to establish a church capable of carrying the sorrowful, tempted one, a company of believers may be poor and educated and unknown, yet in Christ they may be. They may do a work in a home, neighborhood, the church, even the regions beyond whose results shall be far-reaching as eternity. It is because this work neglected so many young disciples never advance beyond the mere of alphabet of Christian experience. These are wages 640. The church should act. That is a neglected duty of the church. The negligence result in deteriorating religious experience. Never experience the blessing. Then your light shall break forth like morning. Your healing shall be spring forth speedily and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord is your rear guard. Then you call the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, here I am here. This is when we respond. In doing practical godliness. That's why Micah says, 6 8, that God says, He had shown you, man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you? To do justice, to love mercy, to walk humbly before your God. How to apply this truth? James is pure and defiled religion before God and the Father is to visit orphans 
widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. James 1, 27. Paul says, whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. If we live our lives to please God, honor Him and bring Him glory, obeying Him on all He tells us to do, this will help us to avoid the sin of omission. And we help, let us not think of anything to get something. Just help. The problem is that many of our human heart is covetousness. We help so that we can evangelize them later, so that we have a good reputation. This is evil. Think of helping without any calculated goodness. Remember Jesus that both the sheep and the goats were surprised. They were not conscious that they have done. No record reported. Be extra careful with stranger. Do not forget to entertain stranger. By doing so, some have unwittingly entertained angels. Hebrews 13, 12. The angels of heaven sent forth to minister those who shall be heirs of salvation. We know not how they are. It is not yet made manifest who shall become, overcome, and share the inheritance of the saints. But angels of heaven are passing throughout the land and the bread of the earth, seeking to comfort the sorrowing to protect the imperil to win the hearts of men to Christ. Not one is neglected or passed by. God is no respecter of person, and he has equal care of all the souls that he has created. As you open your door to Christ's needy and suffering, you are welcoming unseen angels. You invite the companionship of heavenly beings. That's a privilege. When we do those who are in need, in dire need, we work with the unseen angels that is running all throughout the earth so that they can execute God and they're happy to be in their ministry with us. These are VG 6.39. How many of these divine beings cried because they heard bad or negative words? Angels are watching with intense interest to see how man is dealing with his fellow men. Christ of Zechariah 149. Hearers versus the door. Let's do. Let us be the doers. What's beguard all kinds of greed? Life does not consist in abundance of position. So, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heaven will pass with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both earth and the works that are, it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of person you ought to be holy conduct and godliness. Second Peter 2 verse 10. In the end, I want to end, my brothers and sisters, the sin of omission is equally the same sin with the sin of omission. Let us not forget that in Matthew 25, the last picture of Jesus is the sick, the poor, the prison, the strangers, the naked. How do we treat them? And Jesus says, they are his last brother. Are we treating them as our brethren? Each one's work will become manifest for that they will be declared because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test each one's work, what sort it is to us. Let us do practical godliness, especially in the time. It doesn't mean that we, we are poor, we cannot help. It doesn't mean that we don't have these things, we cannot. There are so many things we can do. We can do prayer. We can, I tell you, a lot of things. So this is the way how to stop sinning. Because people think of sin as sin of commission, but rather than there is a sin of presumption and sin of omission, which according to Jesus in Matthew 25, in the day of judgment, many will be surprised because these people needs to be ministered because they are the last brethren of Jesus Christ. Let us stop sinning, the sinning of omission by doing practical godliness 
to our neighbor without thinking anything in reward or anything. Just do good because God is good. This is my prayer.